We received a question about different file formats in Alibre and what they're used for. I have on screen this interesting metallic mesh, and let's go through, using this model, what the different file formats that are available to us are and why and how we use them. If I go to File and Export, I can export this model into a different format. STEP, STL, IGIS, SAT, Parasolid, JT, ZPR, OBJ, and even 3D PDF. So let's start with step files. So this is what a, an imported step file looks like in Alibre. You'll notice that the feature tree just has one thing, imported step file. And this will be true in every platform that you have a step file on. When you convert formats, you lose the history tree. Alibre does have some tools to be able to edit steps, even though that there is no history tree. For instance, we can select move face. I can select this face and we can move it to a particular depth and apply that. Or we can use other tools such as offset face, remove face, and even remove model pieces or remove separate bodies from the model. So Alibre can edit and change steps even though there's no history tree. We also can say activate a 2D sketch, create some feature, extrude, and add to the part geometry that way. And you'll notice we start getting a feature tree as we edit the step file. So we don't have a tree to begin with, but we can create a tree as we make changes to the part. And just like in a regular part, we can roll back to before those changes were made and edit the parameters just like a regular parametric part. So let's talk a little bit more about exporting uh, on step files. When we go to export a step file, we are given several choices. We can choose 203, 214, 242. And what are the differences between these? Well, 203 contains a geometry of the part, right? It contains the model and it may have the ability to contain uh, bits of documentation associated with that model. So the 203 files are used most often in aerospace. Uh, the 214 file is used most often in automotive. It contains every capability that the 203 file does, but it also can include things like face colors. So if you've assigned colors to faces and you want to keep that, a 214 would be a better choice than a 203. The 242 uh, is a merger between the 203 and the 214. So the 242 will contain all of the abilities of 203 and 214, and it is looking to be a unifying standard between the two. So 242 is the most complex of all of them. 203 is the most simple of all of them. Uh, I will actually have a habit of saving as a 203 and as a 242, so I have the most simple and the most complex versions on hand. And if anything, uh, acts funny in the conversion, one of these uh, formats will be able to root it out. If we go to export this model as an STL file, an STL file is known as a mesh format. It's a little bit more nuanced than a step file. So this is what an STL file actually looks like. You'll see there's a lot of lines throughout the part and they're all various kinds of triangle. STL files will take a model and its curvature and approximate all of the faces into a series of triangles. This is also known as a mesh format, right? You have this mesh of triangular faces that approximate the curvature of the part. So there's not a single curve on this model, but what we're seeing is a bunch of flat faces that are representing the curvature of this part. And as you can imagine, we have the ability to adjust the resolution or, in other words, the size of these triangles. And when we have really, really, really small triangles, it's more of a curvature-like part. So when we go to actually export this in a Libre, let's take a look at that. So when we go to ex export as an STL file and we tell it to save, then we come across uh, these faceting parameters. And that's saying, do we want to have the angle between faces uh, be no more than five degrees. So the angle between every individual triangle 
can be five degrees or less. And we can adjust that, right? We can check the custom box and say one degree or 0.01 degrees or 10 degrees or 50 degrees, right? We can do all kinds of things. But the important thing to remember here is STLs are exponential in their nature. The less angle that you allow, the heavier the model will be. It will be a larger file size. It will be harder to produce graphically. If you want to rotate a heavy STL on your screen, there can be a whole lot of lag. Uh, so you have to be very careful in finding the best settings for your part. Uh, you also can choose surface deviation, right? So what is the maximum distance that the STL can come off of your body? And that also is an important one. You have to be careful about not going off of this exponential cliff of uh, processing when you generate your STL. So try to choose reasonable values for these. And you can also choose cell size. Uh, I usually just leave it at the default. So five degrees, maybe I'll go 10 degrees. Uh, I, I would recommend between five to 10 degrees for most models. And we'll say okay to that. So if we choose pretty loose settings in our STL file, right, a uh, high angle, high deviation, uh, we get something that looks quite blocky and may not be as useful uh, for what we want it for, but it is very computationally light. It's easy to rotate my view and see everything. So it's a small file size as well. There's a lot of advantages to choosing a light STL file if you can get away with it. This is a heavier STL file, and you can tell this is taking a long time to uh, even move my screen, right? I'm trying to rotate my view, and there's a lot of lag. So keep in mind that that's what a heavy STL performs like, regardless of the platform. But you can tell there's a lot of facets and geometry that really represent the curvature well, and that's the main advantage of having a heavy STL file. All right, so if we go to export this and we have this IGIS file here, this would be my last choice to export uh, of any format just because it is from the 1970s and it has been, it's really the predecessor to step files. But IGIS files being a legacy format uh, were originally for aerospace and they're nicknamed as an I guess file because sometimes there's a few topological or geometry errors that can occur. Uh, but it's a lot like a step, it's just older. SAT files mostly belong to the 3D ACES modeler. However, SAT files can be opened by other modelers even when they are not ACES based. Parasolid file is similar to the SAT file, except it is, of course, based with the Parasolid kernel. So if you have any users that are using SOLIDWORKS or NX or some other Parasolid based uh, CAD, then this is a great format to send to them. Both SAT and Parasolid files maintain curvature like the STEP file does. It's not a mesh format like uh, the STL file is. JT file stands for Jupiter Tessellation. It's somewhat uncommon outside of Siemens systems. If you're running something like NX or another Siemens product, then a JT file is a pretty good way to, a pretty good format to send to a colleague running an NX product. ZPR is for ZBrush files. So if you're using ZBrush or you would need to export to ZBrush, I mean, that's just what this format is for. It's, I think ZBrush is an artistic program. And then OBJ is very similar to STL. They're both mesh formats and you'd expect similar results between both of them. In fact, if I go export to an OBJ file, and then I open the OBJ file. You can tell it looks just like the STL counterpart. Slightly different face stitching on these faces, but uh, remarkably similar. Finally, you may have this model and you may want to send it to a colleague who doesn't even do CAD or have a platform. Well, there's a solution for that, right? We'll go to export. We'll go to publish to 3D PDF, and we can select a template. Of course, I like this one, so we'll say next. We can add in some text, like a header for a title or something like that. 
and you can choose a certain view if you'd like it to be that view and publish. So this publishes a PDF. Now if we view it in something like a browser, right, you can have a nice static image of your PDF, but it's kind of boring. So it, the, the real fun is opening it in, in Adobe Reader and Adobe Acrobat. So let's go open it up there and see what it looks like. This is Adobe Acrobat. If we try this out, we can rotate, we can zoom, we can do all kinds of things just within a PDF file. So your colleagues don't even have to have a CAD platform. They just need, you know, Adobe Reader or something like that to be able to utilize the 3D capabilities of this uh, platform, right? You can change the view to perspective. We can change our view to wireframe. Right. <laughs> So there's all sorts of views and other things that we can do right within Adobe. So back to our model, if we go to export, right, we have the PDF and then we have Keyshot and image files. So with an image file, I, it simply saves my image in whatever position it's at. So that's what it looks like, right? Just a simple screenshot of our model. We can also export to a Keyshot file. And that just makes a file that's uh, capable of being opened in Keyshot. But instead of exporting it as a Keyshot file, if you just want to get it over to Keyshot, I think the easiest thing to do is go to Send To and Render. And then it opens up Keyshot automatically, and you have it right there. So those are ways that we can export in different file types and what they do. Uh, hopefully it was helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to the Ulibre channel. See you in the next video.